All right, so these blisters are almost gone. So I'll probably will only use those hand wraps maybe for another week or so. And I'm only using them on my uh, bilateral hanging now, so like this. And I forgot to put my timer on. So I'll just have to guess, but that's okay. It's a nice day over here in Australia today, in Avoca Beach, I shouldn't say in Australia, it's, Australia's a big place in Avoca. Sunny but cool. And I got a bit better sleep last night than I did the last two nights. So that's good, because I feel better today. <clears throat> I had a bit of knee pain the last day or two and I've got a, you know a few things going on in that knee I've had a meniscus tear on the medial meniscus I've also got patello femoral joint syndrome and something else I can't remember what they call it I got it all diagnosed a little while ago uh, when I got an MRI done and You know, it, it, it comes up every now and then, I, I start to feel pain. But when you deal with pain, when you understand your injuries in the body the way that I do, it just, it's just a recalibration of how I do things. And it's always a reminder of, okay, I haven't been paying attention to the way that my knee wants to be loaded. Like for example, with this exercise, the reason I do this on an incline like this is because there's a lot of potential for lateral loading in the knee when you do a, an external or internal rotation stretch for the glutes. So lateral loading is you know pressure going this way, which the knee isn't designed to do. It's designed to take pressure that way. And so the... Uh, <coughs> You know, the, the, all I, for me, it's just a reminder of, okay, you know, what have I been doing? How have I, because I do, you know, all this flow work that I'm going to be doing today, there's a lot of potential for lateral loading in that. You know, in a lot of these mobility exercises that I do, there's a lot of potential for lateral loading. And it's... Um, you know, it's something that, you know, when knee pain creeps in again, I have to reevaluate what have I been doing? How can I change this? And rather than stopping and thinking, oh, I need a couple of days off training, it's how do I adjust my training so that this doesn't get worse and gets better? Because motion is lotion. There's a reason why I've got that written on the back of my shirt. Because it is. Resting from exercise isn't the way to f deal with pain. You need to keep moving, but do it in a way that stimulates recovery, not that makes things worse. And of course, I just realized, because I'm so out of sync this week, that I'm doing the wrong workout. And I'm not meant to be doing that today. So good times, but that's okay. That's okay, I'll adjust and I might only just do two rounds today because I am a little bit uh, pressed for time. With my parenting duties today, with my son being on holidays still. part about all this hanging for me is the blisters. I'm almost over the one on my left hand, on my right hand, and now I can feel it coming on my left hand. I think I might have to shave my calluses quickly. Oh, that arm feels really weak today. Okay. 
So an exercise like this, for example, a lot of potential for lateral loading on the knees. So I've got to be careful, you know. If I do it the wrong way, I really feel it <clears throat> in the um, side of my knee. But it's not a reason to stop it for me. That's a reason to explore it. It's funny, I've had people who have obviously been following my channel for a while comment recently and say, oh, I thought you had completely recovered from your meniscus tear. You never completely recover from a meniscus tear, ever. The meniscus gets such low blood circulation that it, it just can't heal. It doesn't heal like muscles do. Muscles heal really well. Tendons heal pretty well. Things like meniscus and cartilage and labrums, they don't heal well at all. In fact, they never really heal. They never go back to the way they were before. So when I say full recovery, what I mean is I'm capable of doing everything that I want to do and that I could do before the injury, again, without pain. So when I did that meniscus tear, I couldn't even squat below 120 degrees without pain. I can easily squat ass to grass now. So to me, that's a full recovery. I can run as well. Run, jump, do all those things that a lot of people can't do after a meniscus tear. So I am pressed for time this morning. So I'm not going to film every set in this workout. I'll just film one set of everything, I think. But I'm going to do three rounds of this mobility work. Oh, flexibility work, I should say. This is a tough one for me. Woo! Okay. You really got to work for the movement to come from the hips, not the spine. Oh man, that is a deep burn.
Oh, this is a really tough exercise. And when I started doing this after my slap test, man, I could barely do two or three reps. I was in, it hurt so much in my shoulder. And so I really had to take it easy with progressive overload. So to get to a point now, you know, where I can do 10 sets and I don't feel pain, it's a huge improvement. Sweaty. That's the I'm starting to warm up now. I can feel that sweat dripping. Woo! All right, that was round number two. I'm um, I'm putting an exceptional amount of work right now into pushing evenly with my left arm and right arm because I could see from these videos that I've been posting when I've been editing them that I haven't been symmetrical with my handstand and also, you know, from doing my pike push-up last week, it really uncovered the imbalance from my left side to right side. So, I'm really focusing, really, really thinking about evenly with both hands, trying to get as straight as I can. And I feel it a lot more in my left shoulder, which is really good. I haven't been feeling it so much in my left side because I've been favoring the right side before. So I feel like I'm making really good progress with my handstand in this past two weeks, which is great to be able to feel momentum in just two weeks. Um, 
you know, what's going to happen in another two months. It's exciting. You know, it's also, it's, it's funny to, for me now with my understanding of muscle tears and injury. Like, I definitely tore something last week. When I've spoken to Phil, our friend, the sports physio, on all the live podcasts we've done, whenever we use the word strain, he kind of laughs and he says, that's a made-up word, you know, it's, it's a tear, it's a muscle tear, it's just what grade of a tear is it? And so I might have called what I did a strain, but if I told that to Phil, I'm sure he'd say, you've torn something, it's just a small tear. But I haven't stopped training at all. I've adjusted my training. And I'm even still doing handstands, you know? All right. Woo! Yeah, so having worked through rehab for these slap tears and, and then having helped so many other people rehab their shoulders as well, a shoulder injury has to be really, really bad for you to not be able to exercise. And so if I can still, you know, get my arms up here, I can still work out. It's just to what degree, you know? So the first thing is, well, you know, a pike push-up, a calisthenics move that uses both arms. That's a very high level of intensity, high level of complexity. A lot you have to think about, a lot of potential for something to go wrong. Hard to scale, very hard to like change how much how high the intensity is of the movement, how much weight there is in your shoulder. So it's like, what can I do that still allows me to keep working my muscles, still working towards my goals of a handstand push-up, but that allows me to keep training safely? Shoulder press, dumbbell shoulder press. Because a dumbbell shoulder press, I'm carrying the weight in each arm so I can really feel that both arms are working, it's safe, I can choose the load so bang, there we go. That's how I changed that workout. And then also doing a few extra auxiliary movements to, you know, to help even out the imbalances. And then, you know, and even if I couldn't get my arms up to here, you know, can I get them to here? Great. Well, then I can do chest pressing. And, you know, same thing with my handstands. It was like, can I get into the position? Yep, okay then it's an opportunity for me to really consolidate everything I've been working on and bring more weight into that side that hasn't been working. Because the reason why, you know, I did the really, it's, I mean, it's the tiniest hair. It'll be, it'll be fine in another week or two. But it's because I was favoring that strong side and overloading it. So I'm now shifting back and I've got that opportunity to say, okay, let's bring some awareness back into this arm. So... There's always something you can do, always. And motion is lotion, you know, keep moving. It's the best way to heal the body. All right, round four.
Oh. <clears throat> All right, fifth round. So this is the hard one because the fourth round was very hard for me uh, to hold good technique and keep that strength in my left arm. Let's see how I go. All right, well, I got it. I got the time, which is really good. But that last 10 seconds, my left arm is really weak and I can feel it shaking. So it's not the time to try and push forward to longer hold times in my next week or two. It's the time to really try and dial in because the only way I'll get a longer hold time is to rely more on the strong side which just grows the imbalance. So it's time to really dial in these five sets of 40 seconds and lock in that left arm so that I can, so that when I fatigue at the end, I don't feel the left arm going. It's just a, that my body gets through it, you know? All right, I'm just gonna recheck my coaching video. All right, it's so important to rewatch your coaching videos over and over and over again. There's good research that shows that the more we watch something, the better we get at it which is, you know, apparently we learn in three ways. You learn by either watching, by doing, or by hearing. So it makes sense, of course. I've always been pretty obsessed with watching whatever it is I wanted to learn. Like when I used to do Kung Fu and when I was a teenager, I used to just watch Jackie Chan movies and Bruce Lee and Jet Li over and over again and rewind moves, like one move 20 or 30 times to get it in my head and then I'd jump up and I'd try it and then I'd go back and watch it again. So, if you're doing online coaching, if you're working with someone, don't just watch the movement once and then go and practice it for a month. Like I sit here and watch my moves during the workout, watch my tutorial videos.
All right. You know, I'll tell you what, I mean, yesterday and the day before were definitely deload days because my, I didn't do any flow work and I didn't do as much flexibility work. But I still did all my strength work. But I'm starting to feel the adaptation to a two workout today. My body's, I'm noticing that I'm feeling better towards the end of the workouts now than I was last week at the start of last week or in the middle of last week. It's Wednesday today. Yeah, I'm looking forward to my strength workout this afternoon because it's my new program and to work out this imbalance in my upper body and I felt like a really good, uh, I did some really good work on Monday, like I could feel the, uh, the fatigue in all the right places. 